fans, this is Batman. And Robin, the boy wonder. And me too, Bat Mike. Welcoming you to the new adventures of Batman. Watch us wage our never-ending battle of good versus evil. Ride with us as we chase the greatest array of villains the world has ever seen. Proving that crime does not pay. Get set for thrills and action. Join me, Batman. And me, Robin the Boy Wonder. And that girl. And me too, Bat Mice. In the super new adventures of Batman. Welcome back, my friends, to an all-new episode of the Batcave Podcast. It's your old bat chum, John S. Drew here, and we're back with a new episode of our reviews of the Filmation 1977 Batman animated series. And joining me from his lair to my Batcave is the man himself from Comic Book Central, Mr. Joe Stuber. Hey, Joe. Good. I've got my ears on and I'm ready to talk about some Batman and bubbles. <laughs> so how is it that I like my memory of this episode when I knew we were gonna do it was that voice? I I'll be honest, I must have blocked it out. Really? I don't remember this I don't remember this one at all. And I, you know, full disclosure to everybody listening at home, I'm kind of like we're doing all these, but I didn't like watch the whole thing and then go back and like I'm, I'm watching in real time as we go through these, so I'm kind of like reliving these as we go. Yes, this one was oh, it's such a strange one, and I thought this is going to be a really tough slog for me to get through <laughs> this one. I thought maybe <laughs> this would be the worst episode because I didn't remember the voice, I didn't remember the villain. <laughs> <laughs> and then it, it got better. So if you're watching, uh, here's if you're watching this, just hang on for like 15 minutes. It'll get better. I promise. But the first like 10 minutes, I was like, man, I <laughs> this is going to be a tough one to do. Wow. Um, yeah, I may have blocked it out from from being a kid. I don't know. It's that voice. It's yeah. So bad. <laughs> It, it's terrible, so but weird. but that was my takeaway memory when I was like, oh, okay, I rem- this, and that's all I remembered from it. So to me, it was like watching it fresh again this time around. And you still rewatched it, even remember? <laughs> <laughs> you just, you're not just phoning this one in; you actually rewatched. It. No, I actually re- and and here's the thing: I don't have a lot of notes. I, I said this to you at the beginning there, and you're like, well, you you better have some things to say, but. It's funny how, and you brought you brought it up though. You said Breaker One Nine. This thing hits so many of the '70s tropes that we were fascinated with. We've got sharks. <laughs> we've got CB radios. We've got underwater uh-huh. complexes. I mean, you know, we've got you uh-huh. know because Man from Atlantis, James Bond movies. Like I mean, this Bond is man. this is yeah, James. Like, this uh, is Batman yeah, doing James Bond. It. Yeah, Jurgens like he had that underwater. It's almost it looks exactly like it too. That like sort of underwater lair. Mm-hmm. Yep. The only thing we're missing is Aquaman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he does control the, the some well, one animal. Right. At least. Uh shark shark tooth. But shark tooth. I get like but you and I could control shark tooth, apparently, right? <laughs> <laughs> just go down and give him some orders. I mean, he just wants to I, maybe he's like Batmite. He just all he wants to do is help. He's, like, he's not a bad shark. He's a good shark. He's a good boy. He's a good boy, shark tooth, yeah. <laughs> The episode we're talking about here is The Bermuda Rectangle. It aired March 17th, 1977, written by Arthur Nadell, who, near and dear to my heart, wrote a good number of episodes of Shazam and the Secrets of Isis. He did, yeah. And then he's also got an upcoming Joker episode, too. Oh, uh, like cool. Sort of a combo, like a, like like a Joker, like if the Joker were the Riddler, because I don't think they were able to use the Riddler. I mean, he's... We see the Riddler at the beginning, but he's in a pink suit. <laughs> there was a whole controversy there. So, yeah, he's got an upcoming Joker episode, which we'll look forward to that one, too. Right. And and basically, the plot revolves around the professor trying to steal uh, the parts to something called Operation Sunspot, which is a device that harnesses the energy of the sun. So, once again, we're dealing with an energy thief of some kind, as we've been doing through a lot of these episodes. 
Yeah, very 70s. Very 70s, yeah. I got to say, I do like that when we get the the first look at the Batcave this time, it's this long panning shot, which also makes me wonder, were they trying to pad this episode out because it didn't have as much story? That's always possible with filmation. It is light on story. But like you mentioned, that is actually one of my favorite parts of this episode. Mm-hmm. And it, you could almost see, like, we, we've talked about toy lines and how the series would have really lent itself to it. But you sort of have that. Um, you're talking about, like, the, the cave, like the mountainside where it goes down. Is that right. the part? Yep. Okay, and you see like the different entrances, like for the bat plane and the Batmobile, and I, at least that's the way I took those to be. And it almost seems to me like that would have made a really cool micro machines playset. Like you couldn't do that to scale; would be so huge. But almost like a micro machines playset where you could have those like different, put each little bat vehicle in the, those little <laughs> areas and then you could open up to a back cave and you could have a barrel with a hidden phone why i don't know why you would do that but oh, <laughs> you could several, put one of those in several, there several several um, barrels wouldn't that make a wouldn't that make a cool micro machines that yeah i know <laughs> wouldn't that make a cool micro machines play set yeah i, I kind of want that now yeah We've said this now several times in the show that this filmation version of Batman in particular really lends itself to what could have been a really cool toy line. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, well, I mean, there's a lot of folks out there that put to you know do their own custom toys. So, like, if anybody out there does custom micro machines, that would be a cool one to do. I'd like to see pictures of that. Yeah. So do the back cave, but like on the mountainside with all the entrances and put the different thing. Yeah. Yeah. Do that. <laughs> it's gonna work. <laughs> do that. Speaking of those micro machines and such, we do get our bat plane, which they fly out to the Bermuda rectangle. <laughs> And I think you know right off the bat, the warning is clearly on the package on this one, too. Just from the, the bad pun on the title alone, it's just... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're going to the Bermuda, right? Like, what? Was there like was there a copyright on Bermuda Trial? Like, why couldn't they say Bermuda? Or does Gotham have their own, you know? Like, I guess that's a... I don't know. You know, that might just be, depending on where... Uh... <laughs> Gotham is located in relation to Bermuda. <laughs> it forms a rectangle instead of a triangle. <laughs> right. Why Bermuda? Like, what? It just, uh, so much about this episode, and we've said this before and, and other things. You, if you start to question it, just don't. It's it, so many things don't make sense as you go through. Again, the voice, like, why is he speaking bubble sound if he's not in bubbles? Because <laughs> like, even Walk- Aquaman could talk underwater. Like you could, you could still hear him, you know? So there's just so much of this episode that Arthur may, I think he just, you know, they just wrote this one quick and went out. But yeah, it's the Bermuda rectangle. Okay. You know, you say that and yet then there are little touches in here. Like, because something else we've also complained about a lot of times is there's no real motivation for the villains to do what they do. They're just doing it. Whereas here... Commissioner, Barbara came up with some interesting information. I've been looking for Barbara. Do you know where she is? I'm sure she'll be back soon. She got an interesting readout from her crime computer. Professor Bubbles escaped from prison last month. He was chief scientist on Operation Sunspot. Until he was sent to jail for trying to steal the plans. He might be at the bottom of this. (laughs) I am at the bottom. Right underneath you, Batman. Search the area and call me if you find out anything. Commissioner, out. Batman, out. We must bring Batman down to us. How do we do that? By sending up some bait. <laughs> yeah, we do get some backstory that we don't always do. I, 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 I kind of wish it had been like maybe he got fired from the project. Mm-hmm. Or something, and then he wanted to get retribution against them. But no, he was a bad guy from the start. He was working on this thing, and then he thought, oh, I could steal this for myself and rule the world. Right. Um, what is it, like to melt the polar ice caps? And then it's kind of like one of those Lex Luthor schemes where I destroy everything, yes. but I, but I want to rule everything. But if you <laughs> destroyed it, you what's left to rule, you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> so I guess he would rule the remaining population, whatever, Whoever survives would all look to him. I guess I don't know, but he was bad from the start. He he was put in jail because he was stealing the plans, and then this is just a continuation of that. So, but yeah, I thought it would have been a little cooler if he had been, you know, if they had done something to him, you know, that, that just wasn't right, and now he's like exacting revenge or something. What did you think of his henchman too? Like, is it Flo? Flo. 
Yeah, I know. I thought it was blow at first. Okay. <laughs> but that's how he said because he blah, 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 and like, what is it blow? Because he's called flow. It makes sense, flow, I guess, because of the water. Mm-hmm. I, <laughs> is that his given name? Or is that, I don't know. Flow's okay. I don't know. He seems more in control of the situation than a lot of other sidekicks to these goofy villains that like, and I, I go back to what I'm doing right now with the super friends podcast in the first season and how you've got this bumbling villain as it is. And then he's even got a bigger bumbling assistant Flo seems to be a bit more together. He does. I mean, at least he knows how all the equipment works in the underground lab and he, he's kind of, you know, putting things together, but I don't know. It's just another one of these things where I some of these episodes I could see fitting squarely into the '66 live action world. Mm-hmm. I this one I can't. This one I cannot no. at no. all. This would have been like probably worst episode of the '66 series if they had done it. I wouldn't even know who you would cast it. I mean, my initially I would think for Professor Bubbles, my mind went to Roddy McDowell. He was already bookworm. Roddy McDowell and the. The bookworm, bookworm. I was, I was thinking mindworm for some reason. I was like, that ain't right. Uh, bookworm on there. So, but like, who would you, he seems like it would be that. Um, may, maybe Billy Barty for Flo? Billy Barty for Flo, I could see. I'm trying to think oh, of Char- Charlie Callis. Mm. You know? Yeah, because he could do the vo- the crazy, yeah, he could do the crazy voice. Yeah. Boy, that would be grating in live action, though. <laughs> yes. It would. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, I, I guess. I know. I, we're, I think we're reaching for some of this stuff. Um, I, I would not want to see this as a live action episode no. on the 66 series. It's It fits squarely in the animation. Uh, but like I said, it does get better as it goes along. It's, re- it's the first 10, 15 minutes are a real slog as we go through. But I, I want to ask you about one of you know the supporting characters, obviously, in this and get your thoughts. And again, I'm I'm watching these in real time as we're going. Is that how you're doing it as well? So like kind of things get re-revealed to us as we as we go through this? Yes. Yep. Exactly. Okay. Batgirl. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do they they know who she is? They don't know who she is. <laughs> I think at this point by now, based on this episode, Batman knows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, sure, because she says before I change into background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they've never established that. So no. again, it's this filmation thing, and we'll mention too, because the the order I think is out. So like did they the production order is another factor too. Like, did they was this one of the ones that was produced later and aired? I, I don't know. But I don't think they've established at all up to this point that they know because even in other ones, it's like, oh, who who could this mysterious Batgirl be? You know, it's almost like the '66 Yvonne Craig version. Well, so, then it, it makes me wonder. That was new. Are we are we going to get an episode then where she finally reveals herself? People who have probably already watched the whole series in, yeah. in anticipation of this are probably going, yeah, it's coming up, you morons. <laughs> it's later on. I don't know, but like that one threw me because this is early in the run. I think even on the uh, DC Universe app. It's coming in at like episode five or something, so right. it's pretty early in the run. Uh, but again, it's filmation. Like, did they did they have scripts all done and they were voicing them, and then they did this one over here, and then the the writer didn't know? I have no idea. But it's certainly in the order that you're watching them, it's jarring to say the least. That she's sure. on the phone and it's just like, oh hey Batman, um, I'll get you this information, but I'm, I'll turn into Batgirl first, and he's like, okay. Well, maybe. And then like he didn't even want her along until he realized he needed somebody to babysit Batmite. Mm-hmm. Um, and by the way, look, I loves me some Batmite. You know that. That's uh, that's part of what this podcast is about. This one, it's tough. This one, I might give some credit to people who really don't like Batmite. <laughs> this <laughs> one's tough to like. We, you know, you do get – an opportunity here because Bat might, like you say, is a little more annoying. It's something we never get to see much in the 66 series is Batman really annoyed. I mean, there's, there are rare occasions here. He gets to show his annoyance at Bat might and kind of losing his patience with him. Yeah. I mean, he cages him at one point, which is really weird because I, what did you think of that? Cause he, he's, he's, he sneaks in, but he sneaks in every episode, so I don't know why they're, they're continually surprised that he sneaks into the Batcave. But this time, they decide to cage him in a bird cage. Right. And I, But he can't get out of it? I, that's so well, strange to me. And the only thing I can think of it, and again, we might be overthinking it, 
But does he want Batman to think that he has the upper hand, even though he, Batman doesn't really have the upper hand? <laughs> I, you know, it's funny. Because he's an interdimensional being. Right. Well, they established in the first episode with, with the Joker that we did that he could be trapped in something that is totally encased because Joker gets him in that room in the ship and he can't get out until right. Robin shows up. But this has bars. Yeah, it's weird. It's a bird cage. He yeah. can just he can even like slip through them or something. Right. It's just yeah, I don't know. But they have to let him out. I you know, I guess when you're a kid they just figure that you'll just accept that. I I don't know. Mm-hmm. Again, this one I can explain away a lot of different things as being cute, charming in filmation. This one's a little tough. So yeah, th- let's put it this way. This episode makes me appreciate the Moon Man episode much more. <laughs> so so let, let me guess. You didn't like the two giant egg beaters that they use to create a vortex to, <laughs> cr- to trap the bat sub? <laughs> Which, by the way, was that's the bat plane? That's all I could think of was a mixer. <laughs> yeah, that's all I could think of was a mixer. And it's like, did, like when they were going through things, did they just look around the kitchen for like whatever items they could see and just go, oh, that. That yeah, thing, you'd make that. <laughs> yeah, it's so crazy. But yeah, Flo knows how to use all. But it's effective. I mean, it turns up the water and it knocks them around. And yeah, it's interesting. But I, I mean, I guess we should mention the plot. I mean, it's Professor Bubbles, and he can create bubbles. Yes, and that he captures tankers, and he. But all these, I don't know. There's like these massive ships. And each one has a part of the machine, right? But there's no people on the ship, and it's the radio controlled. And I, why would you have that many ships for one part each? And uh, I yeah. don't know. Yeah, I'm, they deserve. <laughs> I'm to trying, be- kids. They- I'm trying on this one. But if you happen to skip this episode, it wouldn't be the worst thing in life. They deserve to be stolen. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I guess. Oh. I guess they're so he he captures them and then he's gonna get all these things so you know the dynamic duo are alerted uh, to it and then they go to get him. I don't know. It's yeah. Did you? Yeah, think- it's just it's not my favorite plot. But Did like you- I said, it does get better as you get into it because there's some cool traps that they have to get out of. Yes. And that a little bit to me harkened back to the '66 series because wasn't there an episode where they had a big giant clam? Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. That Robin was being trapped in yes and okay so yeah that that part kind of harkens in because they have to deal with the shark they have to deal with the giant mixer (laughs) giant clams we're inside the clam bad girl come with me what about me you stay here and take care of robin gotcha chief i'll look after things here what we need right now is a good idea and good ideas aren't to be sneezed at sneezed at that's what I call a good idea. His nose must be up there. I'll use these suction cups to climb up. You get bat mite. Robin, break out the emergency food pack. the thing. Pepper, if we can make the clam sneeze, we may be able to get out. Now you crawl up next to his nose, blow this in, then get back and fast. No problem. Why, I remember once. That might please. All right, all right, I'm going. We'll start the bat sub. Hang on! Inside, quick! Yeah, so thank goodness you've got the bat emergency food packs. <laughs> yeah. I mean, again, this is kind of like harkens back to the bat anti shark repellent spray, and, you know, it's there's very much that. 
okay, let's get this item. Oh, we just happen to have that. But Bat Mike does come to the rescue. He's able to go up and make the clam sneeze so they can get out of it. It's a strange episode. It's really strange. You well, should probably have like a drink or two before you watch this one. Well, see, here's the thing. Cause you say that Bat Mike helps there. And, and, and the only time I see Batgirl being of any use is in the clam itself. Otherwise I don't see her purpose at all in this episode. No. And I've even seen that on some like reviews. Other people have, like reviewed the show over the years and things like that. And it's, She's obviously in the opening credits. Right. They make a big deal about her being in the opening credits. But there are some episodes where she's in it just to be in it mm-hmm. because she's a character in the show. I, I don't think she needed to be in this particular episode. No. Like you said, she doesn't, she doesn't really add a whole lot to it. I guess she digs up some information on Professor Bubbles and you know where, where he's from and everything. But that's nothing that Batman and Robin couldn't have done with a back computer. Right. It's just – Yeah. So – I don't know. I don't know. It did, it, it, it did, to me, she was the weakest link in this whole thing. And it's not like they haven't done an episode without her before. Again, going back to the first episode with the Joker, no Batgirl there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, I guess as they went in, they probably realized we should probably include more Batgirl because you think about the Saturday morning audience. And right. You want boys and girls to watch. So on that level, I love it because there is the strong female presence in the series. I do love that aspect of it. There are some episodes where you just kind of wonder, well, couldn't they have given her some more to do? Mm-hmm. Um, again, to me, the most interesting thing was that she revealed that they all know each other's secret identity, at right. least at this point for this episode. We'll see if it holds up or not, uh, how that happens. But, um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's strange, but there's again, those underwater things that happen. They have to get through all those things. And then, you know, breaker, breaker one nine, we got us a convoy. Yes. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, that to me is probably the coolest part of the episode because somebody had just seen convoy, Arthur had probably just seen Convoy or Smokey and the Bandit or Breaker Breaker with Chuck Norris or something because you don't have a convoy of 18 wheelers. You got a convoy of Navy ships. Yes. Uh, Professor Bubbles, uh, his bubble's about to get burst. <laughs> I loved it. I love because, you know, I, I tell this story that when I was a kid, I got a CB radio. I had. I don't know if you if you remember them, if you ever saw them. There were CB radios put out, one that looked like a SWAT truck and one oh, yeah. that looked like the paramedic van from Emergency. I had the SWAT truck yeah. one, and I got it for Christmas. <laughs> and I remember – it's still a vivid memory to me to this day – I'm eight years old, Christmas Day. My my uh, tag was was Bigfoot, so I'm on there going, Breaker 1-9, Breaker 1-9, this is the Bigfoot. You got your ears on. And all of a sudden, this guy comes through, and he's like, hello. <laughs> and next thing you know, I'm having, this converse- I'm having this conversation with this guy who's upset because he's alone at Christmas, and his girlfriend didn't send him even a Christmas card. I'm eight years old, and I'm talking to an adult. <laughs> Oh, there's, there's a lot to unpack there yes. <laughs> and probably not the podcast for it. That might be a whole other podcast. Um, yeah, well that, Hey, you know what? That may have been, that's, that was your first podcast. That was my first that was podcast. Your first podcast. <laughs> Too bad you couldn't have recorded it. <laughs> um, I remember a friend of ours had a CB radio and I remember the whole like breaker one nine, breaker one nine, you know, and then like a voice comes over and you're like, Oh, I'm talking to somebody that I don't know. Mm-hmm. That yeah. to me as a kid was weird, which you talking to some strange I, adult at I Christmas just time went ahead and did it. I, <laughs> yeah, well, well, you're a kid, why wouldn't you? I'm like, <laughs> it feels like something cool, right? Yeah. Um, and then I remember the movies and things like that. So there, but I, I never had a CB radio. But like I said, when I was around, when it was it was cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, so when to see this, to see Robin. Doing the whole breaker one nine thing and breaker breaker and um, what was the uh, they were calling uh, it was Smokey Bear so they were trying to get Commissioner Gordon and his middle name breaker breaker with a big ten thirty four go breaker have you got your ears on well shake the trees and rake the leaves it's a ten five for Chief Smokey Bear Worthington hope this is wall to wall and treetop tall ten thirty three what do you think that's all about. Well, somebody's playing around, but we have more important things to do. 10 
four, old buddy. I'm ten twenty-seven. <laughs> Message delivered. But that was kind of cool. We got the you know the Smoky Bear uh, coming up there too, and uh, one. Uh, danger of the deep that I didn't mention was the electric eels. So you get oh, yes. to see, you know, you get to hear Adam West going up against electric eels because the the voltage line that he got was it a telephone line or something? He figured it out. It's mm-hmm. DC, but the eels are AC. I don't yes, know, is that real? Is that a thing? <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know how things work, but he like changed the polarity, and there's science involved. So I don't know. The last like ten minutes is kind of cool. I'm I'm good with like the last ten minutes of this. Does it save the whole episode? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll, let, I'll let the listeners to tell. Yeah. Uh, me, but let, anyway, the last ten minutes are pretty good. Well, let me ask you one thing because there was one thing I was really disappointed in. I mean, I know, like I say, it's not the best episode, and all. And I know it couldn't be helped because of rights issues and all that. We're doing an underwater story. How awesome would it have been to have had Aquaman show up, especially considering, and I know this is going to sound maybe sacrilegious to some, the animation on this filmation, Batman, was better than the animation on the Super Friends at that time. Because they were using the rotoscope and everything. uh, Right. Super Friends, that's the one thing I love about this. And even the look of Professor Bubbles, you know, full disclosure, I've got it on in the background while we're going, so I'm just seeing the visuals <laughs> and things. The look of them is cool, and there's there's detail. Whereas, I think maybe like the later Super Friends years, it got a little better. But certainly some of the, I think the early Super Friends years, it was that real basic animation, even like when Superman was flying and things. Mm-hmm. I, I love the look of this. So if you're just going by the look of this episode, it's great. I mean, these characters look almost like they were from Mad Magazine or something. It's a weird, <laughs> like, you know, how they were drawn. Yep. Yeah, I just the, – the the vehicles, I'm seeing the bat plane flying right now. It blows Super Friends animation away in this. Again, story-wise, I don't know. But then, it, you know, you compare scripts to Super Friends. Some of those were lacking. Yes. Sort of lacking as well, too. Yeah, I'm just seeing like Professor Bubbles, Bubbles coming up and he's got the you know, a periscope and, you know, yeah. and you get like the uh, the uh, what do you want to say? Like when you're underwater and there's like that sort of um, out of focus, like wavy yes. effect. Yep. It's put over the camera that adds a little depth to it. I think there's an opening shot going in through the gate, uh, the gates of Wayne Manor where there's an out of focus there's a three dimensional look to it mm-hmm. where the Wayne Manor's in the background and that's a cool opening shot too so um yeah visually i don't know you know maybe maybe i'm being too tough on this episode but it, but it does look great yeah, I, I give you that story wise it's not one of the better ones and professor bubbles after a while the voice is grating but <laughs> but the vi- but the visuals the i mean it is it is so smack 70s it belongs there it's it's perfect for probably as a kid we may have actually appreciated it a whole lot more uh than than even some of the episodes where pr- we've, we've been praising now if you think about it because it was so 70s yeah and we've even got the flood pants yep on um <laughs> on flow yes <laughs> the bell bottom and the flood not the flood pants the bell bottoms i mean yeah the 70s bell bottoms but yeah it just it's it's very 70s yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just even the vortex. I'm like, like I said, I've got this on the background. You get the mixer, the crazy mixing machine, the vortex going through. There's some good animation here. So good on you, filmation. You made a good looking episode. Okay. Here's the thing. Let's. Can we say this? Better watched with the sound off. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, then you miss Maybe? the music. You miss the music cues. And I love the music. You know, I love the music from this show. Yeah, you'll hear it a million times in the other episodes. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it's not like this is the only one you'll hear it. Um, I don't know. It's uh, I don't know. I guess to say overall, not my favorite episode of, of this series. No, but there's enough in it to recommend it. it it's not a total wash. It's visually it looks good, and I'd say the last ten minutes are fun. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. From Kool Aid is new. Tropical Punch brings the tropics to you. New Tropical Punch flavor from Kool Aid. Delicious. Yeah, I 
Punch official punchy cake. That's really great when you're thirsty. New tropical punch flavor. Kool-Aid brand soft drink mix. Oh, yeah. Ooh! Two Oreo chocolate cookie outsides to one creamy delicious middle isn't fair. So I got myself a partner. Two middles together. Make Oreo with double stuff. New Oreo cookies with double stuff have a double middle. Twice as much delicious creamy stuff to bite into. Wow, double stuff inside. Two middles together. Make Oreo with double stuff. Or regular Oreo cookies, both from Nabisco. That message. Well, I think that might learn that when there's a job to do, that's not the time to play around. That might, I hope you learn something else. Like keeping off other people's property? Of course I did. You won't find me going anyplace I'm not invited. All right, Batmite, where are you? See you next week. <laughs> and, you know, we got to take a quick look at the Bat message. Because <laughs> when you have a job to do, there's no fooling around. And keep off other people's property? I don't even know where that one came around. <laughs> from i guess i i guess the whole no, thing with that might come in she was sneaking in yeah 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 because he had to apologize for being on there so i guess they just dropping in unexpected look i don't like when people drop in unexpected either i don't like the, the pop-in visits no <laughs> you know I'm, I'm cool with batman on that one um yeah always the weakest episode always the weakest feature of this series we've talked about that each time it's these were throwaways filmation felt like they had to teach people something yep so they i think as the writers arthur probably just uh what, what did we do in this episode let me go Go back through and he looked at the ship. Okay. Um, yeah, don't don't fool around if you got a job to do and don't trespass. Okay. Ah, I mean, is it the Shazam Isis morals? No. No. It's, it's not even the fat Albert ones. <laughs> um yeah, I'm I can do without the bat message on this one. Uh, but you know, may I guess if if Bat might learn a lesson, okay, fair enough. Yeah. That's for now. He learns it until the next episode when he sneaks in again, <laughs> pops in again, and they seem to forget about it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the uh, DC Universe app suggestion at the end of the episode. Very weird one. I don't know what the purpose of this one is because I haven't read the series yet. I'm assuming maybe there's something to do with sharks or something. Batman meets the Man from Uncle issue eight. I, I don't. Yeah, I don't know what the. As I say, I don't know what the purpose of that because we're actually that. Ironically enough, that's the next comic book. Dan Greenfield and I are going to be reviewing from the Batman sixty six series of comics. Uh, so that's weird that it came up even. But I, I don't know what the connection okay. is. Well, we get some comic book reading to do, and then look into <laughs> it. I can guarantee you, there's no uh, comic book out there from DC Comics with. The Professor Bubbles. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would imagine that um, all the, the fans of the old filmation cartoons that managed to work in, like Sweet Tooth got worked into a Brave and the Bold cartoon and all, uh, I don't think they're working in Professor yeah. Bubbles anywhere. <laughs> no. <laughs> He's a one and done. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, sorry, the bubble Pro has officially burst. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm sorry, Professor Bubbles, that we didn't do you more justice here. But yeah, this is this is one for um, the 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 watch and go and pass. <laughs> wasn't there a, like a bubble bath too at the time? I'm like, wasn't there Mr. Bubbles? Mr. Bubbles, yeah. Yeah. So like the kids put in like a bubble bath or something. And mm -hmm. there was, so maybe, I don't know, maybe, you know, Arthur was just looking around. Maybe they were all just looking around, <laughs> whatever. And if, if there's a mixer. Oh, put that in there. Mr. Bubbles, put that in there. Um, I guess he used to be Mr. Bubbles and then he got his degree and then he's Professor Bubbles. <laughs> well, he was, he was very seventies. <laughs> I guess they couldn't say that, that he was a failed, uh, you know, uh, bathtub uh, soap person or you know whatever you call it again probably would have made more money doing that than he would have <laughs> doing this he could have he could have taken over the bubble industry yeah oh oh man well anything else you wanted to say about this episode or are we are we uh have we burst the bubble on this i'm good okay <laughs> i think first 
<laughs> okay, then. So that's going to do it then for this episode of the Batcave Podcast. Before we go, though, Joe, Comic Book Central. Now, you and I were talking about this, that there's actually a pretty good lineage of Batman 66 interviews that you've done, including some I didn't even think yeah, of at first. Little- no, we, it's been a little while since you and I got together. So as we talked, uh, since last we talked, uh, I got a chance to interview Amy Acker. Yes. Uh, she's amazing. She's been in so many different things. Uh, but one of the things I had to talk about was the fact that she played Burt Ward's wife in the flashback sequences on The Misadventures of Adam and Burt. So we did get a chance to talk about that. She does have a story involved. <laughs> And I want to ask you about one more kind of oddball thing in your resume. Back to the Batcave, the misadventures of Adam and Burr. Talk about legendary TV superheroes. Yeah. Um, that was another game. Like the next year, you're playing Burt Ward's wife. Did you know anything about the series? Did you watch Batman at all? Did you get to meet Adam I, and Burt? I didn't get to meet them. Because your um, scenes are all shot separate. Yeah, it's flashbacks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We were kind of right. off on our own. Um, right. I didn't get to meet them, but I had seen the show and... Yeah, it was fun. The the only uh, funny thing about that was they did not ask how tall I was when they cast me in that in that part. And Bert Ward, who was you know a smaller smaller guy, yeah. and the and the guy playing the, him as his younger self was about six inches shorter than me. So when we showed up, <laughs> when we were filming on the beach, they had to like dig a hole for me to stand in, in the sand. And I <laughs> was thinking, I feel like my head is still proportionately larger than this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the magic of television. And then some other things I know you do, you do so many different podcasts, <laughs> uh, but some of the guests I've had, I've had a chance to talk about some of the different television series that they've been on, which relate to a lot of the different podcasts that you put together. So you think about Six Million Dollar Man, Joan Van Ark was on the show. Yes. I have to talk with, uh, with Hollywood legend Joan Van Ark. We talked about the Six Million Dollar Man, the, the classic episode, The Bionic Boy, um, and she's got Six Million Dollar Man stories. So that was cool. She, uh, there's, that's one even, uh, well, You'd have to listen to it. It's actually pretty cool from it. Not about Lee Majors, but about one of the guest stars on that episode. Butch Patrick, we talked about Shazam, and he mentions that he mentioned to me that he was originally supposed to be Billy Batson. I thought that was interesting. I didn't know that, that he was originally supposed to be Billy Batson, and then it uh, didn't work out. Uh, also, Sam Liu, uh, director, animation director Sam Liu, he talked about growing up watching Shazam and ISIS and, you know, the morals and, you know, Saturday morning and all those things. Um, so, yeah, there's been a lot of guests that I've had on, uh, it related to a lot of these, you know, sixties and seventies shows. So that was pretty cool. So be sure to check those out. And you can find those over at comicbookcentral.net, or you can pick up the episodes on one of your favorite podcasting apps. Absolutely. Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Spotify, they're all out there. Um, yeah, Apple podcast, check it out and always enjoy when people, uh, check it out and listen. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Joe, once again, thanks a lot for being here and enduring Professor Bubbles. <laughs> Filmation's a mixed bag. The series is always a mixed bag. Again, though, fun. Ultimately, it is kind of fun. And it is cool to see, you know, Adam and Bert underwater with a shark. Come on. Which, which is why I come back to my argument. It's a shame Aquaman didn't make some sort of little, ca- I, I know, rights and all that. I get it all. I just would have been so, super friends. You know, so yeah, beautiful. The ABC, ABC would have crushed him for that. I know. I know. Ugh. Well, folks, you can continue to hear uh, my reviews of The Adventures of Aquaman, uh, the Filmation ones over at my World's Greatest Super Friends podcast, but over here at the Batcave podcast, we're finally getting things up and running. You heard recently episodes that we did with the 1943 serials and Robert Long and I getting together with our Some Days You Can't Get Rid of a Bomb series, looking at homage movies to the Batman 66 series and such. Dan Greenfield and I will be along soon with a new comic book review. 
plus Kevin Eldridge and I are getting together to talk Electra Woman and Dinah Girl, and Joe Crow and I are actually getting together this week as I record this to get in some more episodes of Monster Squad. So it's all happening here on the Batcave Podcast. You can find out more over at thebatcavepodcast.com or following us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We've got them all there as well. Next time around, speaking of... Do you sleep at night? Do you sleep ever? (laughs) Do you sleep ever? Uh, I think that's why... I think it's like I go into this thing like chugging along and I I, because like right now I'm on this this thing getting out the episodes and then I kind of burn out a little and then it slows down a little again. So (laughs) and then I need my batteries to recharge. Um, Speaking of Dan, he's going to be joining us on our next episode when we talk Catwoman and Clayface teaming up for Curses Oiled Again. (laughs) Great team up. Great team up there and great team up here. Yeah, we're going to have an extra guest along. That's going to be fun. I am so totally stoked for that one. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's because it, 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 th- I will say this much. I think we can all agree Curses Oil Again was a better episode than this. I will say ahead of time, I have watched that one ahead of time. And yes, we, much better episode. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Look forward to that one. It's Catwoman. Come on. <laughs> and and uh, first appearance of Clayface. And the first, the and very Dan. first appearance. Yeah. Anywhere. Anywhere. In terms of uh, 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 moving image form, let's put it that way. I mean, obviously, he's been in the comic books, but yes. yeah, for the moving image. Right. Yeah. So stay tuned for that, folks. <laughs> yeah, it definitely will. Definitely will. So stay tuned for that, folks, and thank you so much for listening. Once again, citizens, Joe, take care, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>